In this video, we're going to talk about quadratic equations. So quadratic equations. And we're primarily concerned with solving quadratic equations. Okay? So a quadratic equation is an equation that can be written as follows. ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0. And in all of this, a is not equal to 0. Some examples of quadratic equations, ex means example, would be something like 2x squared plus 3x plus 1 equals 0. That would be a quadratic equation. Um, x squared plus 5 equals 0. That would also be a quadratic equation. The reason we have this is because if a was 0, we would get 0 times x squared and the x squared would go away. And then we don't want to call it a quadratic equation if it doesn't have uh, an x squared. So there's various ways uh, to solve uh, quadratic equations. The first way is by factoring. So in order to solve a quadratic equation by factoring, you have to use something called the zero product principle. So zero product principle. Okay, the zero product principle. And it basically says if you have a times b equal to zero, then a is zero or b is zero. Okay, let's do a really simple example of, of using this and we'll talk about it because it's actually pretty deep. It's simple but there's a lot going on here. So let's try this one. Solve x squared plus, uh, let's see, uh, 3x plus 2 equals 0. Okay, so in order to do this problem, we should try to factor, so solution. So when we factor this, we know that it has to look like this, x, x equals 0. And we know that because x times x gives us x squared. And we need two numbers that multiply to 2 and that add to 3. So 1 and 2. That'll do the job. And they're both positive in this case. And you can always check your answer because the middle term here is 2x and the outer term is x. And they always add to this guy. So 2x plus x is 3x. We have a product equal to zero, so now we can invoke the zero product principle. So we set each factor equal to zero. So that would be like our a, x plus two equals zero. And this is our, our b, x plus one equals zero. I have no idea why I wrote the parentheses there. You don't have to. Uh, so this is really just x plus two equals zero. I don't know why I did that. And then x plus one equals zero. Then you solve each of these, you subtract two, so you get negative two. And here you subtract 1 and you get negative 1. And those are both answers. You might say, what about the word or? Yeah, the word or is there. So we're saying the answers are x equals negative 2 or x equals negative 1. But then I just said they're both answers. So here's the thing. In mathematics, or, it means one or the other or both. So or in math, that's a weird color. Let me go back to blue. Or in math means one or the other or both. So or in math is not like the or in English, right? So we're saying or here, but they're actually both answers. So that's okay, because or in math can actually mean both. There is an or in math that is like the English or, the one we use in language, just extra knowledge. It's called zor. Yeah, zor. So zor means one or the other, but uh, not both. Anyways, so that's the zero product principle. The next strategy we have uh, for solving uh, quadratic equations is something called the square root property. So square root property. And again, we're just going to touch on each technique. And in the videos that follow, you'll have like lots of examples of, of specific properties worked out. So this one's really useful. So this says if x squared is equal to a number, like say a, then, well, to get rid of the 2, what you do is you take the square root. So you do square root x squared equals square root a. And so whenever you take the square root of a variable squared, you always have to put a plus or minus. So that's, that's the key. 
That's the square root property. So for example, let's say we had x squared equals 9. Right? And we're trying to, to solve this uh, for x. Right? So solution. You would start by taking the square root of both sides. So square root of x squared, square root of 9. And we're using the square root property here. So this just becomes x. And this becomes plus or minus 3. Very important. right? You have to have the plus or minus. And so those would be the answers. Now, it's important to recognize if you have the square root of 9, that's just 3. It's only when you take the square root of a variable squared, that's when you have to put the plus or minus, right? So just, just keep that in mind, okay? So if you have a variable squared and you take the square root, you have to put a plus or minus. Okay, one more, one more example. Say we had uh, x plus 1 squared equals 7. So again, in this case, we have something squared, and it's equal to a number. So we can start by taking the square root of both sides. Oh, and the question obviously is solve. And then when you take the square root of the 2, it goes away. So you get x plus 1. And then again, it's plus or minus square root of 7. To finish, you would subtract 1. So you get x equals negative 1 plus or minus square root of 7. So that's the square root property. So if you have something squared equal to a number, um, you would take the square root. And when you do that, when you take the square root of a variable squared, you always get a plus or minus. Just, just one more. I can't, I can't resist. So we had x squared equals 4. So in this case, when you, when you take the square root, you take the square root, you get an x, and you get not just a 2, but a plus or minus 2, right, every single time. All right, now we can talk about the hard stuff, completing the square. So this is probably one of the hardest ways that people have to learn um, to use when dealing with uh, quadratic equations. So it turns out, so let me write it, completing, completing the square, completing the square. So if you have, if you have x squared plus bx, okay, say you have this, when you add so, and then you add b over 2 squared. So if you, have, if you have this, okay, and you add this to it, you're completing the square. That's what people call it. So for example, let's say we had x squared plus 6x. So in this case, b is equal to 6, right? b is equal to 6 in this case. And we're supposed to add b over 2 squared. So you take the b, you divide it by 2, so 6 over 2, and then you square it. So that's going to be 3 squared, so 9. So if you add 9, you have completed the square. So I just do it in my head. 6 over 2 is 3, 3 squared is 9. Boom, let's do like four more examples. Watch this. x squared plus 10x. 10 over 2 is 5. Right, you just divide it by 5. Take this number, divide, sorry, divide it by 2. Take that number, divide it by 2. So 10 over 2 is 5. And then 5 squared is 25. So plus 25. What about this one? x squared minus 6x. Negative 6 over 2 is negative 3. Negative 3 squared is 9. Boom, there it is. x squared plus 8x. 8 over 2 is 4. 4 squared is 16. Boom, there it is x squared minus 16x. Negative 16 over 2 is negative 8. Negative 8 squared is 64. So all you do in each case is you take this number, divide it by 2, and square it. 6 over 2 is 3, or negative 6 over 2 is negative 3. And negative 3 squared is 9. There it is. 8 over 2 is 4. Right? 8 over 2 is 4. 4 squared is 16. There it is. And what happens when you do this is that all of these will factor. Like this one here, it'll factor magically. Okay, And you just take this number and divide it by 2. So 10 over 2 is 5. That's it there. This one will also factor. Take this number, divide it by 2, so minus 3. This one will also factor. Take this number, divide it by 2, so plus 4. This one will also factor. Take this number, divide it by 2, so 8. Let's do a couple more examples down here so you see it. Say we had x squared plus, uh, I don't know, 16x. So to complete the square, you would add b over 2 squared. So b is 16. You divide it by 2, you get 8. 
okay? And 8 squared is 64, okay? 8 squared is 64, so you do plus 64. And then this factors, this is called the perfect square trinomial, so it's x. And then to factor it, you just divide this by 2, so plus 8. One more, x squared minus um, 10x. In this case, it's negative 10. Negative 10 over 2 is negative 5. Negative 5 squared is 25. And how does it factor? Well, just take this, divide it by 2. And then you keep the sign every time, okay? Just keep the sign. Okay, now we're ready to actually do a problem. Okay, we're ready to actually do a problem. I know I did that kind of fast, but these, these, this problem will take a, a minute. <laughs> so solve x squared plus 4x plus 1 equals 0. And we're going to solve it by completing the square. So the first thing you do uh, when you're solving things by completing the square is you make sure there's a 1 here. If there's not a 1 there, you have to make it a 1. So if it was like 2x squared plus 6x plus 4, you'd have to make it a 1 by dividing everything by 2. Okay, so it's already a 1. So then you have to make sure you only have x's on one side. So x squared plus 4x, and then we subtract the 1. So now we're, in, now we're in a good place. So you have only x's on one side, so now we complete the square. So using our skills from before, this is our b. So 4 over 2, that's 2, and we square it, and that's 4. So we just add 4 to both sides, right? Plus 4, plus 4. So this is x squared plus 4x plus 4 equals, and when you add these, you get 3, okay? This always factors every time. It's a trick. It's called the perfect square trinomial. You just take this number here and divide it by 2. So 2, and then you keep the sign every time. Plus 2 equals 3. When you get here, you use the square root property. So you take the square root, take the square root. Whenever you take the square root of a variable squared, you always put a plus or minus. That's the square root property. So this is plus or minus square root of 3. And then to finish, you just subtract 2. So minus 2, minus 2. So x is equal to minus 2 plus or minus square root of 3. And that's how you complete the square. Go over it one more time. This is the original question, okay? First thing you have to do is make sure there's a 1 here. If there's not, you would have to divide by it. So for example, in this example here, there's a 2. So you'd have to divide by the 2 to make it a 1. The next step is to make sure you only have x's on one side. So we did that by subtracting the 1. The next step is to actually complete the square. So you take the 4, which is the b. You divide it by 2, so that gives us 2. And then you square it, that gives you 4. So 2 squared is 4. You add that to both sides. So we end up here. At this point, this always factors. This is called a perfect square trinomial. So you just take the b, which is 4, and divide it by 2. Boom, there it is. And we end up with x plus 2, quantity squared, equals 3. Then we take the square root of both sides. So we get a plus or minus. That's the square root property. So plus or minus the square root of 3. Then you just subtract 2. We did that over here. And that was the answer. So that's how you complete the square. In the videos that follow, there's plenty uh, more examples of just this. Let's go ahead and finish by doing the very last solution technique, which is the super, super famous, the quadratic equation. So the quadratic equation. So the quadratic equation is an equation that gives you the answers. <laughs> so if you have a quadratic equation, ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0, here a is not equal to 0. The solutions are x equals it's negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Okay, This is called the quadratic equation. Um, how do you come up with this equation? I won't do it because it'll take a little bit of time to do in the video. Basically, you divide everything by a because you can divide by a because it's not 0, and then you complete the square on this thing here, and then you actually end up with the quadratic equation. So let's go ahead and do a simple example of using it. So solve. Let's try x squared plus 3x plus 
plus 1 equals 0. So the first thing you do when you're using the quadratic equation is you identify your variables a, b, and c. So the solution, in this case, a is equal to 1, b is equal to 3, and c is equal to 1. Then you just plug everything into the formula. Now when you're first learning the formula, it's a good idea to write it down every single time. I won't write it down this time because it's up here, but it's, it's good practice. So we have b, which is 3, so negative 3, plus or minus the square root, and then 3 squared, because that's b, minus 4ac, right? So b squared 4ac all over 2a, so 2 times 1. Continuing, we have x equals negative 3 plus or minus square root. 3 squared is 9, and then here we have a 4. That's all over 2. So you have x equals negative 3 plus or minus. 9 minus 4 is 5. That's all over 2. And those would be the answers using the quadratic equation. Again, when you're first learning this, it's a good idea to write down the quadratic equation every single time until you get the hang of it. Um, that was pretty quick, uh, but not bad. We covered every single solution technique. I hope that made sense.